inexplicable, enigmatic, still-surviving ancient Uparts. Named after their academically claimed creators, the Kachari Ruins, a set of large and incredibly heavy relics whose purpose, or indeed true age, remains a largely ignored area of study by any individual who depends on institutional funding for their career survival. Yet there are many other ancient sites which litter modern-day India, whom have an equally enigmatic history. Some of these sites we have covered in the past, like that of Kailash Temple, a remarkable ancient achievement carved directly from a bedrock of Earth with such artistic vision and accuracy that any logical explanation for its creation remains a challenging and still elusive reality surrounding not only the many sites we have already covered, but countless others which still lay either undiscovered or deliberately ignored by mainstream media. Yet our next area of interest has encountered a polar experience, having been officially acknowledged as one of India's most important of ancient sites. Known as the Udiagri Caves, they are a set of 20 rock-cut caves near Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh, and according to mainstream historians, dates from the early years of the 5th century. We have often postulated that some ancient religions, having survived the test of time, and we have often encountered Buddhist or Hindu belief systems engraved upon currently inexplicable stone carvings and ancient structures, which we feel are indicative of a lost civilization's advanced capabilities. Cave 5, in particular, possesses depictions of ancient reptilian creatures, later attributed to ancient religious systems, yet the original inspiration for these carvings is an ongoing mystery, and whether inspired by religious beliefs or possible real events, is an ongoing mystery that mainstream academics continue to stifle the legitimacy and mainstream adoption of. Claimed as that of Vishnu, this depiction of a giant reptile consuming comparatively tiny human figures is a depiction which is undoubtedly of great historical importance, yet we hypothesize that only a small portion of existing human history has ever been explored in detail, or indeed permitted to be a mainstream possibility. Odiagri literally means the Sunrise Mountain, and is, interestingly, not the only ancient site with this name located within modern-day India. Udiyagri Wazi was a Buddhist and Bhagavad Gita site by the 2nd century, as evidenced by the Heliodorus Pillar, yet this inhabitation is possibly merely the adoption of a surviving structure. Additionally, while the Heliodorus Pillar has supposedly been preserved without damage, many other similar sites are all but dilapidated ruins, possibly suggesting that this claim of creation is in reality a hoax. And while Buddhism was prominent in Sanchi near Uriyagari in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, it is highly possible that the religious teachings date from a lost period of ancient history. According to Das and Willis, recent archaeological evidence, such as the Uriyagari lion capital, suggests that there was a sun temple at Uriyagari. The Surya tradition in Uriyagari dates from at least the second century and possibly one that predated the arrival of Buddhism. It is this tradition that gives it the Sunrise Mountain name, and we feel is yet more supportive evidence in defense of the channel's postulations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Who carved Kailash Temple? Who quarried, carved, and transported the Moai statues around the coastline of Easter Island? The reason for our persistence in reiterating these questions is that it unlocks one's perception to the reality of unknowns. They suddenly notice that there are some things about the past in which they had been taught were a lie. The ancient marvels of India as but one example. How can those who are placed in a position of trust, responsibility, and above all critical thought explain these stoneworks away as ones coming from the hands of untrained slaves? Yet even when these ruins are presented as that of the work of ancient masters, the tools and metal technologies available to any of them were simply incapable of accomplishing these refined, masterfully finished feats, sometimes leaving walls of granite so precisely executed they became reflective. 
The more one studies these stoneworked anomalies, still abundant amongst the many as yet unexplained sites all over the world, you soon begin to see scars and marks left upon these stones reminiscent of modern-day electric power tools, and some indicative of stone-cutting technology, which evades even our own modern capabilities, like that of the star holes we have covered in the past. These mysterious artifacts suggest the civilization responsible was not only advanced, but possibly once more advanced than modern man. Panoia's Sanctuary According to academia, once ordered to be built by the Roman senator Caius Calpurnius Rufinus, they claim the sanctuary was dedicated to infernal deities, headed by Serapis and the deities of Lapetius. However, due to the astonishing precision of some of the stone cuts made into these large granite boulders, we posit that the Romans were merely re-inhabitors of this, along with many other ancient structures, to which mystery history attests the creation of were far out of the capabilities of the Roman Empire itself. Furthermore, that the Romans rapidly recorded technological and agricultural developments, just like that of the Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., was largely the result of deciphering, reverse engineering, and the eventual adoption of technological relics left by a far more capable, once world-going, yet now lost civilization. At the site, there are many impressive ancient stone carving achievements. Perfectly square boreholes, largely perfect cylindrical drill holes, left in the hard granite many thousands of years ago. The volume and abundance of lichen species, and the sizes these colonies have become, also confirming the great age and authenticity of the boreholes and the site itself. Ultimately, if one wishes to conclude that this ancient sanctuary was indeed the work of the claim builder, proof must be provided that said individuals were capable of such incredible work, not only capable of the task, but the cut upon stones engulfed with millennia-old colonies of lichen without seemingly damaging them. For many colonies now draped across the stoneworks, we attest are far older than the Roman Empire itself with many flowers already a considerable size before they watched the Romans arrive, thrive, and eventually disappear. Yet alas, without biological proof of the age of some of these species, and the fact that any funded institution would dismiss any of the dates we would pursue as anomalies, it appears the jury remains out on the site, and the debate rages on. It is a place which we find highly compelling.